been at this a while, and I think the most important thing anybody ever does is try to decide if they're going to believe in God or not. I definitely think it's um, important. Yeah, for sure. I can agree with you there. I, I can't think of anything more important. I mean, that's uh, in life. It's one of our <laughs> biggest goals or most important things we have to have to work our way, our way through. Mm. Um, I came. I have a website, by the way. I don't want to advertise it so much. I mean, I'm not after. But I, I used to do some uh, evangelism in Washington Square Park uh, years ago in New York City. That's that's my, that's in the middle of New York University. Mm. Okay. And, uh, I uh, I used a, a, a thing I call apologetic evangelism, which is based on we call propositional apologetics. And, and that's just a method by where you, I stood in the park and said, I can't prove there's a God. I can't prove there's no God. I can't prove that everything is God. I can't prove when you die that there's nothing, you're just dead. I can't prove if you stand before God, you may get eternal life, you may not. Or if you reincarnate. Those are the three basic worldviews, uh, views of what happens after you die. And they're connected to one to atheism, one to pantheism, and the other to uh, any kind of theism. And I've often said I can't prove either one of them. They can't all be true. So how do we work our way through to what we're going to believe is true? Yeah, I think that's a good way to start, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of these beliefs that you're talking about are mutually incompatible. So I think it's reasonable to just start looking at different ones to see well, what can we find to be true and what we can't be true. And I'm interested to see, uh, you know, what questions you have for us. Yes, yes, mm. because, again, I, well, I was listening, and I think, uh, what's your name again from Australia? This is Chris. Chris. Yes. Chris. I think Chris's most big, biggest concern was on the theory of evolution. Mm. Yeah, he definitely. Correct that with the main. Yeah, that, that, was that the main? That, that thing? was that that was that was one of them. Uh, that wasn't necessarily the the straw that broke the camel's back, but um, it was definitely there was there was a, a series of uh, events, I guess you could say, a series of different things that led me to the question. That, that that certainly was one of them. Well, I've had experience in the evangelical. I mean, I didn't start going to church when I was fifteen, so it was all brand new to me. And then I was learning as I went along. I also been in charismatic and apostle groups as well. Was there anything in your experience that you thought was, was genuine or have you had to dismiss it all altogether? Are you somewhat agnostic or are you absolutely confirmed that there absolutely is no God? So absolutely there's no Holy Spirit. I guess I look at um, Richard Dawkins' scale. Uh, I, I can't be 100% certain there isn't a God, but I'm about 99.9% .9 sure there isn't. I, I guess that's probably the, so, the best way. I, I, I know that I don't know everything. No, I, I'm sure. I'm, I'm just talking about you know, you personally, because you have your own personal experience. Dawkins has his. We all have our own personal experience. But you had some pretty genuine experiences that made you believe you were being, as you said, you, were, uh, you know, led by the Spirit or used by the Spirit. Well, I, I genuinely believe that that's what was happening, yes. Yeah. And now you look back and think that that wasn't happening at all. Yes, yeah, that's right. Mm. I, look, and I guess to, to explain that, I think that, um, I guess, having a better understanding of, of brain chemistry and, and the way that um, cer certain ways that, that we speak and, and certain feelings, and I guess wanting to feel certain things, I think the brain can, uh, I guess, trick you into, into believing that certain things are happening. Um, you know, I guess if, I, for instance, when I was speaking in tongues, I, I genuinely believed that I was speaking a spiritual holy language, um, but the reality was it was probably just utterances, just just strange sounds that were were coming out because you know my, my brain was relaxed and I, I guess I was in a uh, a meditative well, I, state. I, mean, I agree. I don't think anybody would have, have proof of the existence of God would be the spoken tongues. I don't think that anybody would ever offer that as a proof. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's, there's more important issues than that. Sure. But yeah, to add on to what Chris is saying, you know, I once had a meditation experience with some Hare Krishnas that were visiting us on campus one time. And I definitely felt like there was something going on when we were doing some of this chanting and we were kind of, you know, in this state together. 
and I realized, wow, I don't, I barely know anything at Hindu about Hinduism at this point. Like, I don't necessarily believe in anything that's going on here, and yet I'm experiencing something here. And I, I think to Chris's point, an understanding of you know brain chemistry and and how we can, uh, you know, look at these experiences from a more scientific un- understanding. You know exactly what's going on. It can it can be easy to see how people can relate these personal experiences to be much more than what they might actually be. They may get some sort of meaning out of it that may not actually be there, or at least you know attribute some sort of source to what's to what's happening. Uh, whereas it might be able to be explained through physical forces, right? Well, I've yeah. dealt with people who, you tell me or Chris, go for it, David. Yeah, sorry, you're right. You got the floor. Okay, I, I would say I would say my since talking with a lot of people, uh, their own personal experience. I mean, I've had people wearing witchcraft and also part of every kind of faith. And, and a lot of people, if even if they can't say the exact same idea of what God is, there's a lot of people believe that there is something out there. There's something other than just nature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And even as humans, we are, we are not just matter. We're not just material. not just atoms and molecules and, and particles, that there's something else that makes us uniquely different in the world, that we're something else other than the world. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of breaking out a little bit, David. Um, so I don't know if it's something on your end that you can fix, but um, I'd agree, I I totally agree with you. Most people on Earth definitely think there's something else out there. There's something more than us. But you know, as you and I both know. Just because most people believe something doesn't necessarily mean that that's true. And I think that Chris would agree with me in saying that it would probably take a little bit more evidence to convince us that there is something else out there, right? Just, you know, the combined, you know, human feelings that we might have about about something, it, it might not be enough to convince us of a God per se or, or any other kind of forces like that that uh, we can't explicitly observe. And, and I'll be upfront with you. If, um, if there's something out there, I, I want to know about it. I, sure. I think anyone would want to know about it because I, I don't want to be wrong. I, I, I've gone down this path because I'm looking for the truth. I'm, I'm trying to find what is real. And this is the conclusion that I've come to at the moment. Would you say you but want the not, truth, Chris? Right. The truth is wanted? Is that what, is that what you're saying right now? I just, I just, yeah. I just, just that, that sounds like a good name for a show, actually. I, I don't know. I might, yes. um, I might, I might copyright uh-huh. that. <laughs> yeah. So we want objective truth, correct, as well, right? Right. <laughs> as close as we can to the understanding of the word objective. Yeah, I, I'd say so. Yeah, Matt, but Matt Delahunty was was bullying me last week. He was saying, aren't you supposed to be subjectively, Dan? I'm like, it's a meta joke, Matt. Come on, just get on with it. It's not, it's not supposed to make sense, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we definitely all can use that word objective in different ways. But yeah, I'd say we, we probably all want it as close to it as we can. Okay, I, I, will, I will give an experience. I mean, I've had several with talking to people in Washington Square Park. I did it for three, well, years or three tours. And is it appropriate for me to give you my website or not? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but David, I, I am curious before you, you talk about this. I want to know, like, what, you know, obviously you have a God belief that we don't share. What is it that convinces you of your God belief? You know, if you could give, and obviously I'm sure it's multiple reasons, but if you could just cite one reason that maybe we could talk about. Uh, what would you say would be one of your biggest reasons of why you have your God belief? Um, I think the thing that keeps me from being an atheist, uh, there's two things. Mm-hmm. First of all, it's, it's I, if you take, it's always been, I mean, ever since time, I mean, you go as far back to the philosophers and there's always this idea of is mind and matter? Mm-hmm. You know, is it all material? Is it not? All the philosophers have been debating this forever. And, and it's, I think it's best to just let people decide for themselves because if I believe my thinking and my acting is something that I'm responsible for and that I'm, I'm moving my body, that I'm not just... Uh, I think the conclusion of materialism is that we're just we're chemical machines. We're just conditioned Okay, and I don't think that we are. We are all. We can be conditioned. I agree, but I think there's a point which we don't want that everything is about our beliefs and what we don't believe is about being just conditioned. Okay, I think we should get out those propositions and make our choices. And the biggest choice of all, I think, is are we merely materialistic conditioned beings that have come about by chance, by accident, 
have uh, the, 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 the Forgive me for accidental. I don't mean to interrupt, David, but I'm. I guess, sure. and, and maybe maybe there's some time where you would get to it, but I'm still not sure if. You know, my initial question is more about your God belief in particular. You know, I think if we're, whether we're examining whether or not we're just material, I think is almost a separate question as to whether or not a God exists. Would you agree? Well, I think the difference is then if we're not materialistic, if we're not just a product of chance and the accidental collocation of, Matt, of, 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 of Adam, says, Bertrand Russell says, mm-hmm. then I think there, that, that does mean there is a God. There is something supernatural. There is something above nature. See, I, I don't know. That's... I, think it's, I think those are the either or questions. If there is no God, everything's natural material. See, I think if not natural material, then we have a case for God. I think that's a fallacy. I think that might be a binary answer there that you're trying to make. Whether you know, like, what, either there is no God or there is a God. You know, but there could be other explanations. There could be multiple gods. It could be the reason why we're here is because of aliens. It could be I don't know, like, like, you know, like the the Christian God in particular. I think is a very specific conception of God, right? And so, like, well, it, well God is. God is it's not a non-material, mm-hmm. and and the God would be mind. God would be the mind, mind? non-material, and it would be mind. Okay, and whatever that is, we don't understand or know. But well, see, these mind are, behind the universe. See, not, these are these are propositions. Can't. I, again, I, 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 sorry, I really don't mean to interrupt, but it's like sure. these are a specific oh, propositions ahead, please, please. about a God that, like, I don't think we've even quite even established yet. You know, like, I, I just, you know, your specific God belief is really what I'm interested in. And I understand that, like, obviously you've you've read a lot about the subject. I mean, you mentioned Bertrand Russell, right? I mean, you you obviously have an understanding of the philosophy of religion for sure and, and kind of the qualities and materials of God. But, you know, for, for Chris and I, it's hard for us to even get to that point where we can describe the exact features of God. We, we don't even exactly know what God is or if he's even there, right? We have to be able to, like, see something first and then, like, pick out what he is afterwards instead of maybe attributing what he should be and kind of projecting that. Does that make sense? Well, I think that's one way. Mm-hmm. I don't think what you're saying is the only way. I'm saying that the best way, as in my experience and from my studies, is you have to ask the most fundamental basic question first. You don't go for the particulars. You have to ask the biggest fundamental question. Why pursue what God might be like or not be like if you haven't decided that there is a possibility that something other than nature, other than matter exists? Well, yeah, that I, your own mind and your own thoughts and things, that you have a soul, that you are not just, that you have a soul pointing to that something exists that is non-material. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, from there, I think the the big question is, and then you go into different branches and see how they argue their case. In other words, I say that's why we did in in Washington Square Park. I said, make your case. Mm. Uh, Why do you believe there's no God? Why do you think of nature? And what are the implications of that? What does that mean to the meaning of life? What does that mean to how you think and how you know and how do you validate Mm -hmm. the things that you know? Yeah, and we would compare those things. Is this a method that you would use with other things to to find their existence, or are we just you know talking about God in particular? Like for example, if I wanted to know if this cup existed or not, would I use the same methods prescribed there? Would I use something else, or you know, is there something about God in particular that we can't use other methods that we would use to find, for example, whether or not this cup exists? Uh, why we well, can't use I it on approach, God? Well, obviously we approach the subject. As- because the subject has been well debated, so we can look mm-hmm. at history and mm-hmm. look at what's been done. That's why we go to school and we educate ourselves to see how these arguments have been created and how they're structured. Why did Aristotle believe there's a God? Why did Plato? That was a subject I had to study in college. Mm-hmm. So well, it's interesting you bring that up, actually, because it's. Am I right to assume that the God you believe is is the Christian God? And you, you, I guess, is there any particular denomination or, you know, Catholic, no, uh, Protestant? No, I have a particular, I have a particular, no, I have a particular theology. I call it dynamic free theism. Okay. Dynamic free theism. I believe that there's an eternal being. He has to be, first of all, free. He can't be part of the machine. He has to be free. Hmm. Now, by the way, okay. you can Google that and you'll, you'll find my website under dynamic free theism. But... Because it's interesting you brought up, I guess, yes, Plato and Aristotle, they certainly did have a, a belief, but what they believed was very different to yes. to what the modern Christian belief would be. They obviously believed in a pantheon of Greek gods. 
Whereas I guess the Christian point of view is, is the Trinity or, or the singular God, Yahweh. Mm-hmm. So certainly there, there have been sure. beliefs over the yep. years that we used to explain things. But then how, how do we get to what the truth is? What, how do we then work out whether, I guess, what, what I believe is correct, um, what, what you believe is correct, or, or even potentially what, what Aristotle and, and Plato believed? Yeah? It's how, how do we dismiss the, the Greek pantheon? Well, first of all, the, the, well, if the era or time of mythology but it doesn't seem to be based on any real theological or well-written, you know, drawn out thing. It seems to be based on experience, experiences they may or may not have had mm-hmm. with other beings, gods, whatever. You know, you know what ancient aliens is. The ancient world had contact with intelligent beings. You know, and also some people believe that the ancient world had contact with angels and God and what became the fallen angels. Be that true or not, at least that's the basis for that. Did you say that you believe in ancient? I'm sorry. Did you say you believe in ancient aliens? I just wanted to clarify. No, no. I said if you, if you, I said if you know about. If you know, okay. It almost sounded like you said you did, and that would be really interesting to talk about. Um, But yeah, okay. Well, Mm -hmm. I I was looking forward to going down that rabbit hole. I know, right? No, I said if you study the subject or know anything about, they you know what they're about. Mm -hmm. That there is in the ancient world intelligent beings who are who help or you know move things along mm-hmm. and that they're in contact with be that true or not we don't know we can't go back in time to find out if that's legitimate or not yeah well there's no way for any of us to know that well so I would, yeah, I, to, to the degree that you know we, we we can look at modern events yes i would agree but can we can we also you know through means of deduction, determine what's most likely versus what's least likely? Like, can we establish at least probability on some scale as to whether or not ancient aliens... For example, if we found evidence today that aliens were real and we we super confirmed it to the best of our abilities, we know aliens are... Like, even if we said that we made contact with them, surely that would raise the probability of ancient aliens being a viable explanation for people's experiences, right? Because, like, we can, well, change, the, we can well, change the probability there. Whereas, you know, with the God experiences, with people talking about their experience with God, I think first we have to maybe establish the existence of a God before we can even verify the experiences of other people, right? Well, let me ask the big question. Mm-hmm. And let's, and, and, and I do let's have a full fight. line of okay. polish here, so I do want to try to wrap it up within the next few minutes, but I'll let you go ahead, David. Okay, let's, uh, I did it with this. Mm-hmm. If you Go ahead, ask me the big question. What is my evidence for the existence of God? Oh, sure. Do that. Ask what? me that. Well, so, I mean, I don't know if your belief is based on evidence, and I'm assuming it is, you know, or, or maybe yeah, it's not. But Okay, so so what it would is. you say is your evidence for your belief in God? We are. We are? Oh, we you are mean like evidence. people? Like man, human, human man, beings? Man, human. Okay, got you. Humanity is evidence. Yes. Okay. Now, by the way, you're, what you are practicing is what we call technically new atheism. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I particularly prescribe to that term. Okay, Matt Wood, Matt Wood. Maybe. I, it depends on what you mean by new atheism. Well, my, Denton, Denton and, and uh, the latest writers, uh, uh, you know, the, the guys, uh, Krauss, uh, who else? All the new writers today are what we call new atheists. They're, they have a new, a different way of methodology. They call it method- methodological naturalism as opposed to – anyway, I won't oh, yeah. get into that. That's the whole thing, for sure. But I can just simply say that in the old sense, in, in before New Atheism, what everybody was trying to find out is how do we identify who we are? Where did we come from? Why are we so unique and different? Why do we have minds? Why can we imagine? Why can we create mm-hmm. the way we can? It seems that we are more than just, you know – yeah, there's something. It must be something else. There are must we, be soul. There must be mind. Yeah, are we human or and are we dancer? That's people. Sorry, that's a killer's reference. Most people well, my like age will get that. I, I got two of their songs on. My, oh, there we go. Okay, on my great. Phone list. Well, yeah, I mean, but, yeah. To to wrap up your point, David, I th- I think um, you know, it is interesting to think about a lot of you. You bring up a lot of grand, broad themes here of like humanity and who we are and why we are where we are, and, and I yeah, like yeah. talking about that stuff. Unfortunately, I, I do have a full line of calls here. I'd love to continue this, though, another time in talking about why you think 
man is the best evidence for a God. Um, but until next time, I, I do want to get to these other calls. I just want to say thanks again for calling in. Um, and well, always, uh, I, always a pleasure, Dan. You're, yeah. just, you're very unique on your approach, and I, you treat everybody very, very well. Well, thank and you. Chris, Chris, I only hope that uh, you don't give up. I, I have so much I can say about God and that nature that I believe exists, but I hope you don't give up on that God who might be, exist and that some of your experience was actually with, with a God who does exist. I hope you're still... Keep open to that, my friend. I, I'll be, you know, well, I, I, I appreciate I the intent behind it. I, be, I, I genuinely do. Yeah. There we go. Well, David, yeah. thanks again for calling. I hope you call again next time so we can talk about this more. But until then, take care and have a great night. Um, yeah, so uh, kind of a, you know, you know, ending it on the best evidence for God is, man, I would say for me, Chris, you know, that doesn't really convince me too much. And like the reason why is because you could say that for a lot of things. You could say, well, I think the best evidence for uh, the f great fairy in the in the interdimensional parallel universe is us you know like uh, you know until we can establish what's supposed to be good evidence for something you know just the fact that we exist doesn't necessarily predicate that of a god at least you know that wouldn't convince me right no well, well the fact that we exist is also evidence of i guess what the scientists are saying about uh, that evolution the, the origins of the universe um you know it could also you could also say that that's evidence that we were biogenetically engineered by aliens it's Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very loose term and, and I, I can appreciate what he was saying and, and I guess the intent behind it mm -hmm. um, but I, I would need a lot stronger evidence than that yeah and, and one thing about conversations like these that I, I think it, it's hard because we go down a lot of rabbit holes here you know I, I try to get to the point of a lot of these questions you know very simple I'm just asking what where's God at you know what is it how do we know? And and I felt like we were going all kinds of tangents there, and I, and I was it wasn't as satisfying to me. You know, like we we're not establishing what God is, who God is, how we know the qualities that He has, um, and what we can confirm. And looking at the personal experiences of other people, I think as we've talked about, has weaknesses. We both have at one point claimed in our lives that the Holy Spirit was in us. That was definitely something. Absolutely. We've said, and like we, we now we have recanted that at least for ourselves, right? So like, it, you know, personal testimony on that kind of level isn't as reliable as some other kinds of evidences that we can find. Not to say that personal testimony is entirely useless, but it's definitely not the strongest thing we can put on the table, right? Uh, uh, and you've got to remember the placebo effect as well. I mean, I, I remember years and years ago, even before I'd gone down the Christian path, uh, I remember having a headache healed with Reiki. Um, and and I was convinced that it had, it had done it. And realistically, now I know it was most likely a placebo effect. Yeah. And, and people do placebo. And I guess that's when when you're feeling. Well, I guess for me, when I look back and say I was feeling the Holy Spirit, what was I actually feeling it, or did I just want to feel it and convince myself that I did? And I'd probably say it is the latter. 